energy storage. I could talk about a supposed breakthrough in energy storage each day, and I'd still be talking at the end of eternal inflation. But this week, I came across one that I hadn't heard of before, and it makes a lot of sense, at least to me. The major reason we need energy storage at the moment is the intermittency of solar power. Solar power is great, and it's plenty if you average over the entire globe and the entire year. We've seen prices of solar dropping dramatically and in installation soaring, and this looks very promising. But we need to be able to store this energy for the dark times. Scientists have no shortage of ideas for how to do that. The best one might be hydro storage, in which you use energy to pump lots of water into a reservoir at higher altitude and then let it run back down to generate energy. And that's great, but building mountains with lakes next to them doesn't scale very well. The next most obvious energy storage is lithium-ion batteries. The trouble is that these are expensive. There are many other proposals such as hydrogen or other synthetic fuels or metals or thermal energy storage in which you heat some substance and thermally isolate it and so on and so forth. This new method now is none of those. It relies on using sunlight to change the shapes of molecules and storing energy in that potentially for weeks. It's called molecular solar thermal energy storage. The energy from the sun falls into a molecule and changes its chemical bonds into a new configuration that has a higher energy and is metal stable. This means these molecular shapes are stable for a potentially long time, but if you supply some initial energy to them, they'll decay back to the state of lower energy. You can trigger this decay with light or heat. It's quite similar to the decay you see in these chemical hand warmers, where you supply an initial trigger and the supercooled liquid releases thermal energy. This idea has a big advantage over chemical storage like hydrogen or synthetic fuels in that the molecular bonds don't need to be broken. This means that the required energy is much lower and so it can be used with solar panels, not just with concentrated solar. At least theoretically, these materials could also outperform electrochemical batteries like lithium-ion in terms of life cycles. This is because no electrons are transported around, so the material doesn't degrade as quickly, theoretically. This hasn't yet been borne out in reality. The entire idea is still very much at the lab stage. That's despite it not being all that new. It's been around for about 30 years. And several molecules which work have been discovered. But the trouble with those has been that they work best in the ultraviolet. This is unfortunate because most of the energy is in the visible range. Or if you want to be causally correct, I guess we should say that it's visible because it's where most of the energy is. Also, you know, 30 years ago, people weren't all that interested in energy storage for photovoltaics, because why would you if you have all that cheap coal, right? So it's taken a long time for scientists to look into this closely. In this new paper now, a group of researchers from the University of Mainz reports they found a way to fix this problem by introducing an intermediate layer that converts the sunlight from the visible range to the ultraviolet and then stores the energy in these shape-shifting molecules. They tested about 12 cycles in a row with both sunlight and LEDs and found basically no degradation. This increases the storage efficiency by a factor of 10 above previous methods. But before you get too impressed, that's still only 5.8%. Lithium-ion batteries usually have an efficiency of 80% or so. It's like comparing my productivity on a Monday morning to a Friday afternoon there's room for improvement. One way to increase the efficiency could be to use a molecule that doesn't release the energy in terms of thermal motion, but in terms of electricity. Now, let me be clear that this is a lab work at the very early stages, and it might go like with many of the most efficient photovoltaic cells, that they are too fragile or expensive to be used in the real world and make commercial sense. Indeed, this intermediate medium that the authors of this work use isn't cheap at all. 
So this isn't going to solve the photovoltaic problem anytime soon. However, if you're a fan of photovoltaics, and I know many of you are, then I think this is a development to have an eye on because it could become an all-in-one solution for both capturing and storing sunlight. So keep calm and keep on dusting the solar panels. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.